I'm just gonna run through. You can't even like get up on one little thing. I'm surprised she's not like rabid. Did you learn anything? Just as I thought. I'm surprised she's okay to like mother, turn her back on it. The look of her hair then disappeared down the stairs. Sell her into the house. So the door is hidden. In that case, we've no time to lose. Come. I work alone. This matter concerns us all. We don't know what's in there. Your men will make a lot of noise. More than I'll make alone. I am the Church of Eternal Fire's agent in these lands. It is my duty to go with you. Fine. Just you then. The rest stay here with Anna. Let me go in first. Give you a shout if I find anything interesting. So be it. Let's begin. Okay. I hope that was the right decision. Yeah, it's still open. Got it. Whoa. By the eternal fire. Never seen so many before. Voodoo dolls? Looks unsavory. What is all this? The trappings of a black magic ritual. Witches weave human hair through dolls they first curse. They gain a grasp on individual souls this way. With your Think hair? The dolls represents Anna. Interesting. Can we free her if we find it? It's the only way I know of. But there are risks involved. The items woven. This man into doesn't the doll seem like a bad man. They symbolize the individuals the dolls are meant to represent. We must find the doll that is Anna and take it from here. Seem to know a lot about this. From tomes on black magic. Initially, we burned any that we found. Recently, we decided it might be wise to read them first. That's interesting. Poisoning your minds with magic? <laughs> Superstition? What's the hierarch think of that? Have you met the man? No. Neither have I. Ah. Nice. <laughs> Interesting. I think it's a good idea because then they know what they're up against. They know how to counter it. Burning stuff, even if they end up burning it in the end, I guess, I think burning any book is bad, obviously. It's, it's, you can't, if you fear it, it will find a way to come back, you know? And there's knowledge lost. The, like, exactly this situation where, like, if they burn all the books, they might not know how to counter this stuff, you know? Or they wouldn't know what to expect. they just run in, swords raised high, and get themselves chopped down. This risk you mentioned. Take it we only get one shot at choosing the right doll. I'll not chance it. I did not know, Anna. You've learned much of her. Should find Shouldn't we call to... down her daughter? Right. Let's take a look at these dolls. Ah, uh, well, it's, it's not the violet hollyhock. That's not her favorite flower. The favorite flower was, um... Uh... I mean, the light's like... Ooh, there's like light on that flower, so I'm like really, really, really suspicious. I... I was it the holly... It was the hollyhock she liked. It was the dragons or the birds of paradise that... Um, Tamara liked, but she liked the hollyhocks, right? It was in a story. Uh, and it's the only one not completely, obs like, not at all obscured, so, okay! Yeah! Hmm. This is interesting. A doll with a flower. What's so interesting in that? Not just any flower. A yes! A hollyhock. Baron once told me it was Anna's favorite flower. You believe this to be the doll? Yep. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure it is. Taking it. 
Be ready. Quick outside. What happened? 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 Is everybody dead? Mom, you're ah! all will be well. You're going to be fine. Tammy, I'm dying. She's not well. Raven doesn't rightly know what's happening. You're weak yet. You must rest. No. Listen to me. The crones. I was to be their beast to the end forever. You broke their spell. But now I must go. What's she talking about, Witcher? Uh, mm. The crones deceived us. Their curse is a death sentence. No way to lift it, at least not in a way that would let Anna live. We broke their spell temporarily, partly. Now it's gotta run its course. What? What does that mean? She's dying. It's good to see you together. I'm sorry, Annie. For everything. I'm sorry. Mother. Tammy. Do you remember that day on the inner? Of course. Those plums are so sweet. In your dress, so blue. You wove me a wreath of flowers. <laughs> we laughed the day away. Please, remember me like that. No! I thank you. They had a chance to say goodbye. It was your doing. Shame I couldn't do more. Come, child. The eternal fire will soothe your pain. Leave me be. And here's pain. Your pay will await you at Crow Perch. Collect it there. Is. Like, you're gonna stay here? You gotta leave. Oh, we gotta go talk to the Baron. Okay. The storm. Revenge Damn is it. a poisoned arrow. I really shouldn't leave. Geralt should know better. We shouldn't leave them here. Oh, I guess I could I could fast travel, yeah. I should. The crones aren't gone. Like they, he said, like they are close, you know? And they were like speaking. 
they are like I think they perpetually like inhabit that painting like you could try destroying it but I don't think you'd make it you know what I mean I'm just wondering, also wondering what happened to those kids. I mean, I guess it makes sense for that spirit to wish ill upon the village that tried to destroy her, but I don't think they knew what she was. I think they were just trying, they were trying to not be plagued by nightmares, and I don't know if she made the nightmares, if the druidists made the nightmares, or if the, if the crones did. Well, nothing's on fire. Anyone want to go and jump in puddles? Huh. It's kind of interesting to see how people react. Like, it's cool that I don't think they even do this in Skyrim where they react to the weather. Like those people, they like hide under the eaves in the archway when it's raining and they like blow their hands when it gets cold and they kind of change the way they do things a little bit like they run a little bit from place to place if they have to I was noticing it's really interesting is there not a weapons person in here? like Master Witcher, there's an elven burial ground in the caverns near about to mid cops and they hate the monsters roaming about it there are a lot of them beasties you've, uh, you know. Uh, there's an elven cave near Midcops. Do I already have that? What are you looking at? No. What the hell happened? Yeah. Hanged himself. Did Blind nobody stop city? him? Himself, or did you boys help him? Fuck, you take me for a murderer? Yeah. He was what he was, a right bastard. But I respected him. If I'm to choose between a greater and lesser evil, I'd rather not choose at all. Usually, though, the stakes are just too damn high. Sometimes, in choosing a greater evil, you do good, albeit in a small way. When I chose to save the orphans of the swamp, I couldn't know Anna would die. And I never thought the Baron would leave his wife where she lay, find a rope, and hang himself. Most times, you make your choice, and never look back. Lost everything he cared for. No surprise he lost the will to live. Don't look too concerned, you and your boys. What would you have us do? Sit and wail? Baron was a good soldier. But settling in here at Crow's Perch, it made him soft. We'll introduce a new order. Things will be different now. I imagine they will. Really? Loot what? Loot him? Ha! Huh. Velen players, there's no worse one. A cloth doll. It's a. It was like a quest thing. Really? I'm sorry. Time to water the horses. I don't know what to say. Like. Obviously, my actions here by by trying to save those kids, Anna died, and he killed himself. I, I mean, he wasn't a good man, but he was. Like he was. I don't. I don't think he. An elven burial ground in the caverns near about to mid cops. I don't know. And you hate the monsters roaming about it. Like, there's nothing you can say about that. You guys know. Like, it was a very complicated. He was a very complicated character. Like, everybody involved in this is gonna be a complicated character. But. 
he, I think, in the end, meant the best. He, he only wanted his family back, you know? The whole time, that's all he wanted. And he just went about it sometimes poorly or... I don't know. But for that, to have that kind of an end when he, you can't hate him. You know, you can't, if you hated a guy, you're like, yeah, yeah, good, I'm glad you're dead. But you, you can't hate him. And we spent so much time with him. Like, this is very strange. I don't, I think this is one of the first, like, the game will acknowledge, like, one of the first decisions where, like, you, any action trying to choose between a good or between a bad and a worse situation. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Geralt feels like we did there. Did we do the right decision? But by releasing that druidess, that spirit, she destroyed a village, basically. She saved the children, but she destroyed a village. And the death brought about... It brought about Anna and the Baron's death. But if we had destroyed the druidess and done what the crones wanted, well, the children would have been dead, I think. And... But maybe we could have saved Anna. I don't know how that would have played out. And then the Baron would still be alive. Two. Haha! <laughs> Hmm. That sounds horrible. Oh, we did sirens? Okay. Out at sea, you hear a beautiful woman singing. You turn the ship around at once. You understand? Even if it means sailing straight back into a storm. Advice given to his son before his first solo voyage. Like skilled hunters setting out wooden ducks to lure in drakes, sirens and lamey has lured men near using their own bodies as decoys. They can transform to resemble beautiful human maidens, though with tails covered in silver scales instead of legs. Once a naive sailor gets within arm's reach of these beautiful creatures, their fairy faces suddenly turn to fang-filled fish-like maws, and lovely tails promising unknown delights become sharp, death-dealing talons. One legend claims sirens and lamias were once friendly towards men, and supposedly were even known, albeit on rare occasions, to accept some sailors' clumsy attempts at courtship. In our day, however, they are decidedly aggressive, perhaps soured by the numerous kidnappings of carried out by frustrated sea salts. Uh, whatever the truth, one thing is certain, these days the monsters display no signs of goodwill, and so when spotting with them, one should immediately reach for one's silver sword. Hope that you have one. I'm sure that's not a common weapon. Sirens and Lamias, the Sirens' more dangerous cousins. It's always like we get, like, the normal one, and then it's like, then there's also more like them, but more dangerous. Usually hunt in flocks. Oh, okay, so they're not solo. Uh, I thought they'd kind of be, like, solo people, uh, hunters. Making use of their numbers as well as their ability to move effortlessly through water and air. They can freaking fly! They can fly, too! On the ground, however, they are virtually defenseless, and so a wise set to do to damage their fin-like wings and force them to land. The Igni sign also pr proves effective when fighting against them, threatened or injured silence without a terrifying shriek, leaving their opponents to them while they escape, and their sisters swoop down for an easy attack. Yeah, it would not be easy. Oh, grape shot. Hybrid oil. Okay, hybrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Igni and air a telekinetic blast. They certainly are beautiful looking. Look like little dragons. Suck you by freaking heck. <laughs> like, I want to make a character who looks like that in Dragon Age. Again, good grief, woman. I'm spent. Ooh. Lester of Smallton to a succubus if you just were taking a vow of celibacy. <laughs> Unlike other monsters, succubi and minions feel no desire to kill, do not crave human blood, and usually do not, in fact, mean any harm at all. They are motivated by one thing and one thing only, an insatiable lust. They try in vain to slake this by engaging in sexual acts with any other humanoid species they encounter. While it must be admitted that their victims rarely put up much resistance, this does not mean, mean succubi and minions do not present any danger. Their never-ending advances, though pleasurable at first, have pushed more than one man to madness or even death. Do they... Are there... Aren't male succubi... They're incubi? Incubus? Isn't that right? Is that correct? Or is it... Do these female succubi... Do they also... Uh, uh, have lustful attraction towards women? I would assume that. I would assume they wouldn't really be picky. <laughs> um... 
that seems kind of that would be that would be strange if they just preferred men. I think if, if they just I don't know maybe some maybe you know what maybe some succubi prefer women and maybe some succubi prefer men and maybe some don't care <laughs> maybe just some are like whatever is good. I was gonna say in some legends succubi like they the the like constant sex and stuff or whatever it, like they're like they're like pulled or draw on you is like kills you eventually. Uh, like it like sucks the life force out. They're basically like sucking the life force out of you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> succubi and main and like is, oh is this like maenads like the Greek maenads? Okay, because the maenads are like uh, super aggressive usually. So uh, at least you know like M A E N A D S like the Greek maenads, the Dionyses like sister mothers whatever they are to him. Um, the women who have, like, foresight, they drink a lot, and, uh, they are, they are, like, basically goddesses of revelry and madness, and also prophecy and foresight. Uh, it's very interesting what legends do when they give women power like that, and the kind of what they use to explain that, perhaps. I don't know, I wrote a little bit of a paper on it once, it was really kind of cool to look into. Most cultures have a legend about this sort of a thing. Succubi and maenads can usually be found near human settlements, including small villages and popular cities. They prowl at night, though when stricken by serious need, they will leave their lairs during the day as well. They shower their affections on men as well as women, the young as well as the old, the ugly as well as the beautiful. Some of them are particularly fond of pastors and other holy men, who suggest seduction they treat as sort of a game. Yeah, they're not like animals, like they're basically human and they have like the exact same like probably mental prowess we do, but like probably more in some cases, but there you go. A succubi are peaceful by nature. When forced to fight, they'll offend themselves fiercely. One should thus not be fooled by their fair appearance. Under the velvety skin of their arms lie muscles of iron. And a blow delivered with their rear goat-like legs. Nuh-uh. Succubi don't have... Nah. I guess that makes sense. They have, like, horns. They're not like, um... Oh, God. What is it? Oh, the goat men. Ah, that are, like, with the maenads, usually. The sa sa satyrs. 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 I think that's how you say it. That's kind of cool. Kind of a combination of things. That's cool. I guess that makes sense. They're a hybrid. Haha. <laughs> but you don't get to see their bottoms. Not in this one, but you can kind of... It looks like pants, but it turns out it's like fur. That's cool. That's cool. Crones! Yay! Sister crones, hand in hand, terrors of the sea and land, thus do go about about thrice to thine and thrice to mine and thrice again to make up nine macbeth <laughs> not macbeth macbeth act one scene three the isolated corners of our world harbor creatures older than humans older than academies and mages older even than elves and dwarves the crones of crooked bog are such creatures no one knows their true names nor what breed of monstrosity they in fact are i bet you they were human once common folk have given these three sisters the names of Weavis, Bruis, and Whispers, Wispus, and call the three some the ladies of the wood, or simply the good ladies. The crones act as the true sovereigns of Velen, whose inhabitants they help survive through harsh times in return for unquestioning obedience. They wield powerful magic, but one different from that of mages. They draw power from water and earth and are bound to the land in which they live. The crones can hear everything that happens in the woods, predict the future, twist the threads of human lives, and bring blessings as well as curses. The crones seem intent for all intents and purposes, to be immortal. Magic elixirs keep them from aging and allow them to take the appearance of young women. These elixirs and their magical, their mystical ties to the swamp in which they live also gives them supernatural strength and vitality. Vulnerable! Do I have to fight them? Would I have had to fight them if I didn't make the choices I did? Fiend! Oh, boy! I regret to inform your grace that your grace's son fell while hunting a fiend. He died on the spot, along with his squirrel, his guide, the beaters, and his peasant entourage and his hounds. Whew. Fiends are walking mountains of muscle capped with horned, tooth-filled heads. They're like their rare cousins, Bumbakvetches. 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 They live in thick forests, swamps, and bogs. When possible, they avoid hunters. When not possible, they kill them and, not with, and without much difficulty. Interesting. Okay, time to look at characters. Anna. Uh, Baron was convinced. Uh, seek comfort. Blah blah. blah further deepening the chasm.
Though Anna was found in the end, she was no longer herself, for a terrible curse had transformed her into a monster. The Witcher had a good idea who had prepared this fate for her. Geralt's suspicions were confirmed shortly thereafter. The curse afflicting the unfortunate woman was indeed the crone's is doing. Anna had turned to the Gassa sisters because she did not wish to give birth to the Baron's child. The crones granted her wish in their own twisted way. Right. After that, the worst began to happen. Right, we did that. Okay. Geralt snapped the evil spell afflicting Anna, restoring her true form to the crones included nasty one last pinch of vengeance and their vile brew that caused Anna to die as soon as she regained her freedom. And his loved ones had only time for a brief farewell before she parted. Brew, no, okay. Uh, Dandelion, Emir, Erdin, Eskil, Gerald, Gredaden. Okay. Okay, Gerald's subsequent encounters with Graydon confirmed his suspicion that the man was a typical hunter. Graydon was unorthodox in his methods, prioritizing results over ideological purity and his strict adherence to the hunter's codex, even though, as he was undoubtedly aware, this approach would hardly endear him to his superiors. After the affair in the swamp was over, he returned to Oxenford, taking Tamara with him. Uh... Though changed beyond all recognition by the hardship she had suffered. Hendrick, Johnny, mm hmm. Morven, Tamara. Hmm. Hmm. Well, freaking, freaking heck, I guess I should go talk to Kira now, but, yeah, I guess, uh, we'll call it here, uh, sorry to end it on a slightly depressing note, I don't know, it was, he, you could say he got what he deserved, that maybe nothing could absolve him for what he did, but it's very painful to see somebody who so wishes and is trying for absolution and redemption to sort of not get it, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know. But, anyway. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next one.